Hello everyone. In the last video, we installed and started using Jest. We wrote some uh, a dummy test and some unit tests to test some of our functions and some integration tests to test how our functions work together and uh, whether they work as expected or not. In this video, we're going to be writing and running a few user interface tests, or some people like to call them end-to-end -end tests or functional tests. Whatever you want to call them. These are tests that run a browser, uh, launch your application, and test if things work as expected. So it basically mimics an actual user's behavior uh, by performing certain things like clicking, typing, navigating around the app, uh, just like a person would actually do on your application. Now, for that, we're going to need a separate tool other than Jest. And for this, we're going to be using uh, Puppeteer, which is... Uh, an API, it's basically an API with a bunch of functions that let us control uh, and operate a browser uh, the way we want it, the, so that we can test our, our user interface. So it can run either Chrome or Chromium, which is a live version of Chrome. Uh, Chromium claims to be faster, safer, and more secure. Um, I prefer to use it just because of the fast startup time, because when you're running multiple tests, that uh, delay in startup time can actually add up. Okay, so let's actually start implementing our user interface tests. Okay, so here on the documentation of Puppeteer, it tells us to install it, and um, so let's do that. <laughs> okay, we have our project here from last time. Let's run npm install Puppeteer. And this now will install Puppeteer and will, I believe, download Chromium. Okay, I'll be back uh, once it's done installing. Okay, so now that Puppeteer is installed and saved in our dependencies, I should have actually added the dev dependency flag because it actually saved it as a dependency, but that's fine. Uh, we can now create our test. Uh, we're going to be testing the index uh, file. So let's do index.test, oops, test.js. Now let's bring in Puppeteer. So import Puppeteer from Puppeteer. And um, let's test, uh, let's actually look at our UI for a second. I'm going to do npm start. Um, I've added this uh, to the npm start command, this dash dash open, so it opens without me having to type on that. So let's actually test the first name field um, that when we click on it and we type a valid name and we click away, it it's actually valid. Let's test that. Let's test for that. Now we can do that by, let's create a test like we did last time. Let's call this validating first name field. Of course, this takes a, uh, a callback. And here we need to uh, create a browser, which is the, the Puppeteer browser. So let's do const browser equals uh, puppeteer.launch. And uh, this can take options, but for now, we're going to leave it without options, like the default options. But uh, the problem with this, this returns a promise. So we need to do dot then. But what we're going to need to do later is we're going to do a lot of uh, operations that return a promise. So we can't be chaining dot then a lot. So we need to use the a, uh, async await uh, syntax. So we need to bind the promise. We need to wait for the result of that and bind it to this constant uh, browser. So we'll do await. And to use the await keyword, we need to give our callback function, make it an async function. Oops, async. Okay, so now we have this browser. It's gonna wait for it to launch and then give us the value. And now we need a page. So let's do const page equals. And by the way, all of this is in the documentation. In the get start, it shows you that you need to create a browser here and then you uh, navigate to your page and run all your tests okay so the page will be um await um oops browser dot new page it's gonna create a new page and uh, now we need it to go to our application so let's do await page dot go to and we need to give it the uh, URL for our application. Let's make that actually into its own thing. So let's do const uh, app equals. And now we need to give it the uh, the file, the index file for our application, which is uh, right here. And uh, to do that, we're going to give it the 
file system uh, URL, which is file. For me, it's um, so to C and then users, and it will probably be in your user folder. Mine is called Ahmed. Uh, yours will be probably different, so make sure you type yours. So in, mine is in the desktop. It's in the Jest tutorial folder, I believe. Yes, it is. Slash index.html. Uh, so yeah, look where your file is and put the your path. Okay, so now we do go to app. And now we can uh, actually do what we want to do in, on the page because now we're on the page. So we can do a wait page dot click. And this takes a selector. So what we want, if we go back to the index, we want to cl click on, on the first name input. So we want to click on this input. So let's do the selector for this would be um, input hash, which is the ID first name. So now that we've clicked on it, we can actually type in it. So await page dot uh, type. So we now type, uh, we, we give it the selector again. So the selector would be input hash uh, first name. And now we need to give it the value that we want to type. Um, okay, let's, let's actually test first for the invalid value. So we give it an empty string like this with a space which should be validated into uh, invalid or made into uh, invalid. And now for it to be validated, we need to click away because our code validates um, when you focus out of that input. So let's click something else. Let's, um, let's just click another input. So input at last name, name with a capital N. Uh, now our field should be uh, invalid. So what we do now is let's do uh, let first name input class, and I'll explain why I named it like this. We're gonna use this function called um, evaluate. So dollar sign eval, and now this function, it takes, like you see here, it takes a selector and a, and a callback function. And I'll explain it in a second what it does. So the selector would be again input so you can just copy this. Maybe it would have been faster to type it, but yeah. Input, and then we need our callback function, which takes uh, a result, and we'll call this input, and returns something. Let's actually just return input the class name. And uh, yeah, okay, so what this evaluate does is, is it takes a selector. And then when it takes that selector, it runs document.query selector to find uh, something on the page with this uh, selector. And then it gives that result to this callback function. And then we can operate anything on that uh, result and then return something. So now that we've given it this input, it, it will return, we, we said input the class name, it will return to us the class name of that input, of which, which is the first name input. Now we can test it. So we can do expect first name input class so of course now we expected it. Uh, we expect it to be invalid. So to be invalid. Now we can run our test. Okay, so let's save and let's quit this uh, development server. Let's put this on the, on the right side. Um, let's clear. I'm gonna make this bigger. Oops. Um, let me close and open it again. I can. We can do. We can actually run just this file. So let's do just index which will run just this uh, file and not the other ones. Okay, after running the test again, I realized that I made a silly mistake because the JavaScript that we have on our page doesn't exist right now. Uh, this, bun this, this bundle doesn't exist because we need to actually build. So let's do npm um, run build because uh, it, it says that expected invalid and received nothing because the validation didn't happen because the JavaScript file didn't, didn't exist. Okay. So now maybe you didn't have this error, but I had it. Okay. So now if we run our test, it should now succeed because, because we have the JavaScript and in a moment, and it does succeed, but it does give us this, um, open handled error, open handles error because because, oh yeah, because we didn't close the browser. 
Okay, this bugged again, keeps bugging. Okay, so after running our tests, we need to close the browser. So let's do await browser.close. And if we, oh, not this command. I uh, want to run just index. Okay, now we should, the, our test should run and close the browser without any open handles problem. Okay, and it does, cool. Okay, so now let's, in the same test, let's test the uh, the valid value. So here again, under this test, I could still keep going and do, uh, go back and type a valid value. So let's do page, await page.click, and let's click our input, so input, hash uh, first name and let's do away page dot type and let's type a valid name so like John and then let's do away page dot click and let's click away let's click on input hell let's even click on input email why not and then now we can uh, copy the same thing but without the let actually we can copy the whole thing here and we can do yeah, get the input, get uh, get the class name of it, and then expect it to be actually valid, not invalid. So let's run our test. So just index, and now it should pass as well, because it should be valid. Oh, there's a problem. We're in page dot type. Oh, because I forgot. I need to give it um, the actual selector. So, oops. Let's do this. So input hash uh, first first name. Okay, the, uh, the the handles thing again happened. Oh, because this didn't terminate because it kept waiting for this. Okay, should run now without any problem, and it does. Cool. Okay, so let's actually test that all our fields are being validated properly. So let's do another test here. Let's do test. Um, what do we call this? Let's do like uh, no, or like validating all fields. Oh boy, these typos validating. <laughs> okay, an async callback. And here we're gonna again do the browser, but what we can do is we can declare our browser outside of this function, so we don't keep a, and it's a let because we're gonna change stuff about it. And so here we can just do, yeah, browser equals, yeah, browser equals await puppeteer.launch. And our app as well is a constant, it doesn't change, so we can put it outside. And uh, yeah, it's fine like this that indentation okay here we can as well launch the browser again so we can do browser oops browser because we closed it remember at the end of the other function so let's do a uh, await puppeteer dot launch and uh, let's navigate to that again so let's do advanced page equals um, await browser dot go to app oh no the browser dot new page we need to open a new page first and then do await uh, page dot go to go to app okay la let's do let's do our validation thing so we can do you can copy this so we go to the first name we type a valid name and then let's keep going. So we go to the last name. So let's control, select first name and control D and do last name. And this will be though. Um, again, let's go to input hash password. Let's type a valid password, like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, A, B, C. Um, and now we go, oops, we go to the next one which is confirm password and we keep the same password so that's valid and now we go to email and we give a um, john at email.com so we give a valid email 
so now, actually we need to click away. Let's just uh, click page dot click. Let's just uh, click back to our first um, field. It's fine, it's still gonna be validated even when we click on it. So first input hash first name. So now, technically all our fields should be valid because we put valid uh, values. So what we need to do is, what we need to do here is that we need to check, we need to check if there is a field that has the class of invalid, that means uh, this test should fail because all the fields should be valid. Um, it's better than testing that all the fields are valid because um, that way uh, we will, you know, it will be more, um, there will be more code. So it's simpler to test whether there's a field that's invalid. So what we can do is that we can do const input, or let's do invalid input to be more expressive, equals, uh, we're gonna get this, so we can do await page dot dollar sign evaluate, and we're gonna give it this selector input dot invalid. So an input with a class of invalid, which shouldn't exist. Um, and now it takes that input and it returns to us, uh, it returns to that input itself. Okay. Um, now, but the problem with this, uh, evaluate is it, it, it returns a promise and this function right here, if it doesn't exist, if the input doesn't exist, it, this will throw an error. So what we need to do to avoid uh, an error in our uh, runtime, we need to use try catch. So we will do try and we will put this whole thing inside of the try block. Uh, let's do an expect test here. Expect input dot to be undefined. Um, but since this is, uh, you know, th this is valid what we're doing, then this will never be executed because this should fail. We want this to, to have an error. So let's do catch error and let's do, um, I don't think we have a way of testing this error, but let's do expect error to be defined. And now let's run our code or actually this expect input to be undefined. Let's run our uh, test. So just test or just index rather. And, oh, we forgot to close the browser actually, but it did fail anyway. Puppeteer is not defined. Oh, puppetit. So it's puppeteer. I misspelled it. So let's run it again. Let's actually here do um, a wait browser.close. Oh, it did succeed. Okay. Yeah, it succeeded. Well, yeah, it succeeded. We expected it to succeed. <laughs> okay, but the problem here, uh, I want you to see this error. So let's do, let's do uh, to be uh, true. I'm making it fail on purpose so that you will see the value of error to make sure that uh, you understand what's actually happening. Let me, uh... okay, so it says here, received an object, but expected a Boolean. Okay, this is the value that it received. Error, uh, error failed to find uh, element matching selector input invalid, which is cool uh, because none of them are invalid. So let's actually make one invalid and, and test for that. So now if we give no name, we type no name here, uh, or like type an empty string like we did earlier, we can here uh, expect this to be valid. So expect this to be defined. So let's do uh, to be defined or let's do, let's actually do uh, to be like f five or something. And because to fail it, to see the value, because the, the thing is when the, when the test succeeds, it doesn't tell you the values. So I want to fail it on purpose to see the value. Okay. So it said, uh, expected five received an object comparing to different types, but it wouldn't tell us, okay, received, but it wouldn't tell us what the subject holds. But since this, uh, this try actually succeeded and uh, this 
const is not undefined and there is no error, that means there was an input that was undef um, that had a class of invalid. Okay, let's reset our code here to be uh, defined. To be defined. Now, if we run this test, oh, it doesn't close the browser when it actually succeeds the the um, when it goes into the try. Hmm, interesting. Maybe we can put this in the middle of the try block. Okay, so now it succeeded. So this was defined. So if we want to actually see what's happening in our page, we can pass options to the launch, uh, to the browser, uh, to the puppeteer.launch. And this takes an option headless, which means if your browser, you know, has an open window that you can see or headless means like it just runs in the background, basically, which is uh, this is by default set to true. So we'll set it to false. We want to see our browser, but I want to change one other value of slow mo because otherwise it will instantly fill everything and you, we wouldn't see uh, what's happening. So let's do a slow mo, which basically slows every action by 35 milliseconds. In this case, we specify 35. And let's uh, let's run it. Okay, so let's do just index and uh, let's see what happens. Okay, we get a window here and it's typing, which is cool. So, uh, as you can see, like we exactly put, it types an empty string, this is invalid, and it types everything, and everything here is valid. Oh, we didn't type an email. Did we not type an email? We did. Oh, okay, we're not giving it enough time to uh, to type everything, because we introduced the slow-mo thing, I think. Okay, so one thing about the test is it takes a, a name, a, a callback function, and an optional, uh, timeout uh, number. If you think your test will take a, a long period of time, I don't know if we've done this uh, earlier or not, but but we'll do this now. So let's give this, uh, I think 10 seconds is enough. So 10,000. And let's run it again. And this is why this uh, thing is happening because we're not giving it enough time. It exited before finishing our test. So now it should actually type the email and everything. Okay, types do, types the passwords. Cool. Now it succeeds and uh, types everything and we get to see what's happening. Um, we can as well actually uh, specify some more uh, options. You can go to the uh, the thing. A really cool documentation, by the way, from Puppeteer. You can select anything. You can go to outline and see any of, their, uh, of the classes and any of their functions. You can click on launch and see all the options that you can use. Um, for example, a... You can see headless here, the boolean explains everything here, it's, which is super cool. Okay, so let's run, let's actually run a test where we write everything in the form and we click submit and we expect that panel that comes at the bottom that says success. All right, let's do that. So test, we will name this, um, I don't know, uh, fetching success panel, I guess. <laughs> Doesn't matter that much. Uh, async again. Uh, oops, I keep misspelling async. And inside of here, and by the way, this will take some time as well. Let's give this another 10 seconds and then write our code. So here we'll have a browser. Uh, browser equals await puppeteer. Now I could uh, do the browser in a different um, and if in one function and just start it here or or there's as well uh, these uh, methods in in just called uh, before all and after all which before all like it says it executes before all the tests and after all does executes after all the tests you can open your browser in before all and close it in after all but for some reason when you change the settings of the browser for me it, it brings up an error you can like google more on that and try to uh, implement that but for now i'm just gonna uh, launch it again. Okay, so let's give it a headless of false in the uh, options. Uh, slow mo. Actually, it was a bit too uh, too fast or too yeah too fast. Let's give it 40, 40 milliseconds, and um, we can actually give it uh, some arguments. And I'm gonna give it a window size. So because I want to make it look cool, <laughs> a window 
um, da uh, so I think it's two, yeah it's two dashes here dash dash window dash size and it equals te let's give it 1080 um, not 1080p um, 1080p is my full resolution I'm gonna give it 1280 by uh, 800 and yeah that's the browser we need to have our page so const page equals await uh, browser dot new page and uh, we need to wait for our page to go to um, app now we need to do the same thing let's actually copy everything from here so we are on the page let's start filling our inputs so first name we type a valid input so John a doe, valid password, valid confirm password, valid email, cool. We don't go back to the first time, it's okay. We now want to click the button. So if we go to our index, our button here, where is it here? It has an ID of form BTN. So what we want to do is that await page dot click and the selector for this will be button hash form BT or BTN, capital B. Um, now this clicks the button and in our code we have some because uh, we want to mimic uh, async code and we have this set timeout and it waits one second and it creates this panel that is uh, where is it it's a div that has a class of uh, card panel so let's look for this so in our test we need to um, we actually because this takes some time we're going to use a special function so it's to success panel equals a wait page dot wait for selector so this will wait for this element with this selector to exist to appear on the page so which in our case is the div dot card dash panel which is the success panel and uh, yeah and let's do expect um, success panel dot to be defined and uh, let's close the browser await browser dot close and let's run our test okay so just index Let's see. Now it should run both tests, open the window, run this test, and then close it and open the window and uh, run this test. And the second window should be with a different resolution or different window size. Cool, it closes this. And there we go, a different window size. And for some reason, the picture is tiny, but that's fine. Okay, clicks on the sign up. Hey, successful. It gets our panel and, uh, and it's defined. Um, just to make sure that the value Actually, I think we're going to get a weird value from this. Uh, wait for selector returns a promise with a handle, with an element handle, with a type of element. Okay, let's give it a, a wrong value to see what the actual value of the success panel is. And uh, let's run it in headless mode for now. So I'm going to, so that it goes faster just to see the result. Let's comment these things. Um, uh, let me... Let me comment out this test for now, so that I just want to run the tests quickly. Just want to this one runs quick, and I just want to run this as well. So there might be a command to run a specific test within a specific file, but uh, I, I don't know it for now. <laughs> okay, so we got a bunch of stuff. Let's look. Okay, so this is our thing. It's right here. It has a class name. Uh, HTML development description. Okay, it, got, it has a the class name is div. Um, no, the selector is the div dot card panel dot green, which is our actual object. It's um, here. It has a class of uh, green as well. Oh no, we create it in an index. In the index right here. So card panel green. Cool. So it's actually getting that uh, that panel correctly. So let's go back to be defined. And as well, of course, you can dig into this object and find that class and compare that class to uh, card panel. But uh, for, I'm, I'm fine with to be defined because uh, seeing our code, that will still be a valid way of testing it.
So yeah, this is it guys. Uh, we've run some cool UI tests and of course you can check out the documentation. There's so much more you can do with Puppeteer and with Jest as well. You can expand the functionality of these tests. You can, you can test for so much more. You can hover on stuff, move the mouse, uh, navigate around different pages within the same application. There's this, this stuff is so powerful. So, um, if you want, you can like make, take advantage of this and like, make some really cool tests. I just uh, pushed all the changes and uh, I will li link this uh, GitHub repository in the description, which has the code for this just tutorial. Um, so there is the, the original code in the master branch, which has no tests. And then part one, which has the complete uh, uh, um, UI tests, not UI tests, sorry, unit tests. And then part two, which has the UI tests that we've just done in this video. So if you would like to download the code, it's, it's up to you. Anyway, so I hope you've learned a lot from this. Uh, if you like this, like and subscribe. There will be way more content in the future about everything related to web development. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon. Bye.